What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another dope edition of Define Your Legacy. I'm your host, Theus Elijah McBee. And before we tap into today's episode, just want to shout out the online store of Define Your Legacy, which can be found at the link in the description of this episode. All right, we have tees, long sleeves, hoodies, and a whole lot more. All right, so feel free to check it out in the link in the description of this episode. All right. But to jump into today's episode, we got Jay the Trader on the show. What's going on, man? What's up, Theus? You good? Always, always, always appreciate you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you could, man, just introduce yourself um, and tell the world the value that you provide. Hey, everybody. How you doing? I appreciate you first and foremost for listening. Uh, my name is Jason Sweeting. I'm a trader from Miami, Florida, and everybody calls me Jay the Trader. I believe that uh, everyone deserves financial freedom. So I turn people into ATM machines by teaching them how to trade the markets with consistency and confidence. Hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. And obviously, you know, trading is becoming more and more popular. You know, I yes. always say that there's there's so many different income streams out there, but trading, I think, is the one thing that people are starting to gravitate more to. Um, Thank God. So what is there a specific market that you trade? Uh, yes, I'm a futures trader. So okay. I don't trade options. I don't trade stocks. I don't trade uh, any of these other commodities. I trade the futures. Uh, what that means is like, think of your, you know, think of the market like a supermarket. You can go into your supermarket and go to different places, the deli, the meat section. You can go to produce or you can go to customer service or the bakery. You can go to anywhere. And uh, like when I go to the markets, you know, I don't go to the equities or indices or crypto or foreign exchange, you know, what I do is I go over to this section called the future section. It's kind of like an auction. Think about it like that. And uh, when I go over there, I'm able to uh, participate with the other market participants. I make money daily. Um, I lead a trade room. And for other people, we help other people do it daily. So it's, it's kind of like my thing. I like the future. Hmm. So what exactly are futures, right? Because I know obviously, you know, when we talk, when we talk about stocks, it's very simple for people to understand in terms of companies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and even mm -hmm. on the crypto side, you know, you, it gets talked about so often with Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these uh, other coin stuff. But what exactly, how would you define futures? Well, the futures market is an auction. So there is an opening bid. Think about like Sotheby's or any other auctioneer that you think of. You know, somebody might say, OK, well, I have this remote and it's a great remote. This remote is, uh, you know, it's beautiful. It's ergonomically designed to fit into your hand. It has multiple settings. You can control multiple lights with the remote. You can make the lights go off and you can make them come on. It has a 50 foot range starting bid, five million dollars for this remote. And if that was the auction, everybody be going remote controls shouldn't cost five million dollars. <laughs> so the auctioneer might say, well, how about three million? Still nothing. Well, one million. Still nothing. Uh, what about one hundred thousand? Uh, nothing. What about ten thousand? Nothing. So what's happening right there? A seller is asking for a price. But no buyer is going to buy at the price the seller is asking. So the seller has got to come down to a price that eventually buyers are willing to participate at. So think about this remote uh, or think about a four bedroom house or an orange at your grocery store or a new set of tires. And what we often do as consumers, we might see something and say, nah, that's not something supposed to be the price of that it's cheaper at this other place you see what happens is when you get to an auction buyers and sellers are communicating with one another all the time and the futures market is no different the sellers open up with a price and the buyers decide whether or not they wish to participate at that price or whether they decide to sit it out so the conversation that's happening in the market in the futures market is this the sellers say hey i'll sell something to you or I won't. And the buyers say, oh, I'll buy it from you or I won't. And that all depends on if they can, you know, agree to a good price in order to exchange the value. And what would you say makes futures a little bit different than other markets? Uh, to me, it's simpler. It's it's uh, better pay. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, the pay is more immediate. Um, your ability to see whether or not you're right or wrong is more immediate. Um, 
So to me, it's an all around easier market to understand. Like, you know, a lot of investors, they have to study CEOs and study profit and loss statements and 10Ks. Uh, a lot of people, they have to study products. And, you know, if this business has a moat around it, does it have a strategic advantage? Uh, did it just hire somebody new from some other company in order to push it to the next level? I don't have to do any of that stuff. <laughs> I just I wake up and I look at what the market is saying about the value of the assets that I trade. Uh, so for me, I trade the interest rate futures, specifically the 30 year treasury bonds, which is kind of like trading the United States as a company. Think about it like that. Uh, and then I trade the S&P 500 futures every day as well. And that's kind of like a bag of company. Think about all-star weekend in the NBA, the West Coast All-Stars. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, even if Harden has a bad game, you know, Steph Curry will make up for it. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a, a little safer trade. Mm -hmm. And those are two things I trade every day. Yeah. Pretty simple. And are, are, are these type of markets like very volatile? I know you mentioned, obviously the pay can be quicker and more substantial, but is it more like, are there also a lot of risk involved as well? Well, I'd be re uh, remiss if I told you that we weren't playing tiddly winks. You know, I don't wake up every morning and play touch. No, it's tackle, you know, and we're playing with money for money, you know? Uh, however, what we want to do every day is mitigate our risk. You know what I'm saying? Like me and you, we didn't just say, join me on Zoom. We, we actually set up a time when we would do it, you know what I'm saying? So that way we wouldn't risk being on this thing by ourselves. And I think with an adequate amount of practice, most anything can become very, very minimal when it comes to a risk. Um, like, you know, if you're not a bike rider, don't ride a bike. But if you like Lance Armstrong, you know, get out there and do your thing because you know what you're doing. Uh, and everything comes down to if you know what you're doing. I think that playing any game without knowing the rules is risky. I can take a guy, let's just say uh, he runs a 4-2-40, right? Uh, let's make him about 6-3, right? He'll be pretty, uh, he'll pretty, be pretty solid too. So he'll be 6-3, he'll be 222. He'll run a 4-1, he's a machine. He's never played football before. We're going to drop him as the running back for the Super Bowl next season. How do you think it's going to go? I mean, he's fast, so he should be able to run. I mean, I mean, he's big. He's strong, right? He should be able to just go for it. No, he doesn't know the rules. So even if he has everything that the game would need from a physical standpoint, he's still missing some of the mental area. And that's why it's so important for me when it comes down to mitigating risk. It's about preparation. It's about understanding the rules. You take that same person and you put them in a gym. And after you put them in a gym, you make them run football drills. You teach them the rules. You teach them how to run, how to catch. Then maybe they'll be ready for the game. And just like everybody else, you know, we're all participators in some market, the job market, the real estate market, the car market. We understand how to buy and sell. We understand what a fair price is. But, you know, hey, we got to understand the rules of this game before we just go playing it willy nilly. If you're in the NFL and you don't know the rules, you quite literally can break your neck. And if you're in the market and you don't know the rules, you quite literally can lose your shirt. So it's very important for me. When I teach my students, I teach them in a thing called SIM. It's short for simulated or simulator. And what it is, is we can look at real market data, but trade paper money or fake money. That allows the person to learn without the risk of losing all of their money. Yeah, so break, break that down a little bit more for me, if you don't mind, the paper trading. What exactly is paper trading? Oh, uh, well, it's just like being able to it's kind of like being able to be in the real game of the market data, but not having to risk your own uh, body. Think of it as any simulator, like a flight simulator. If you crash in the simulator, you get out of the simulator, go talk with your flight instructor on what you did wrong. You know, it's way, it's great to crash in the simulator. Like if we're going to crash somewhere, let's crash in sim. And it's just like that, whether it be a flight simulator or any other type of simulator, it allows for you to have real market reaction. Your body will react, your mind will react, your hands will react, you'll have emotional reactions, but it won't cost you a real financial loss. Yeah. 
and so like paper trading in, is good you know just the idea of yes being able to practice yeah. on your own without using your own money right yes Everyone, you know yes definitely when you hop into like investing understanding like you can always lose money right yes so you it's can important to practice with money that's not yours yes um, yeah but yeah so how long would you say someone should probably uh paper trade because you because you know you get, you get a little antsy in the beginning right everybody you know i make real yeah. money so how long do you think is you know is a good enough time to switch over to the real stuff when you feel like you're ready you should go to the next level now I'll, it's two ways one you should never i don't care how many rings you get like you still should show up to practice the next day so mm -hmm. me right now still today i practice weekly i don't practice as feverishly as as i did when i was first starting out but i still do practice weekly where i pull up replay data or i download data from an old day and i practice my skills so you're never ever done sharpening your skills however what happens with any trader as they're learning they can get apprehensive uh or they can um they can, they can, you know, kind of feel like not ready, not fully prepared. So I like for people to listen to themselves on the inside. If you come through the course and you've done your 21 day success and, you know, you're ready, you feel like you're ready to leave sim and maybe you want to try a combine or you want to try trading your own money. Okay, great. Go for it. One thing I'll tell you is the truth is the truth. Until you really are in that plane and you lift off, you won't know how you'll feel. You've only been in a simulator before. And it's the same thing in the market. You know, you might have tried sim and you might have even had success as a simulated trader with paper money. But guess what? When the money gets real and the lights come on, you know, there's still some growth that is going to be there. I, I'd be lying to you if I tell you that you're going to feel the same without money or with money or if you'll feel the same trading paper or a combine or any other trading scenario it's going to be different but that doesn't mean it's bad it's just new so when you feel like you're ready go to the next level when you go to the next level maybe you might have to get your sea legs about you a little bit you know your simulator doesn't quite shape like a real cockpit you know uh the sounds aren't the same the haptics it's weird looking out onto the horizon uh some of the responsibilities of dealing with the crew could be there everything could be different you know it's a little different it's sort of the same but it's a little different and you know give yourself the grace to grow into that next level you know, you won't be perfect. Nobody is. So you don't have to worry about that. You know, the big thing is just give yourself the grace. You're ready to go to the next level. Go to the next level. Don't don't let the losses get to your heart. Don't let the wins get to your head. Keep yourself even kill. And if you feel as though, OK, well, you know, it's kind of tense up here. I want to go back to sim for a while. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Because the cabin pressure is real. And I'm telling you, it's the same thing in this market. You know, you can get into that sim and you might have, you know, an hour's worth of stamina to trade, two hours worth of focus. But when the money gets real, you might sweat a little more. You, your heart might speed up a little more, you know. And if you, you know, hey, I got 25 minutes that I can focus to this before I need a nice little break. You know what? Take your breaks because you're just learning. That's the biggest thing I would tell anybody. You're always along the path of your journey and you've never arrived, you know, so if you got to, you know, take your time to grow into it, grow into it, but never, ever go backwards, never retreat, yeah. never, ever retreat. Yeah. And that's a tough lesson, I think, for a lot of people to know. Yes. At the beginning of anything. Right. Trading, trading or not. Just, you know, it's all a journey at the end of the day. But you mentioned um, obviously we talk about paper trading and obviously like it's easy to, to paper trade when your emotions are attached to it because it's not, you know, your money. Obviously, if you if you lose, OK, you might feel bad, but it's still not yours at the end of the day. Yes, right? of course. But obviously, when you make that switch towards investing your own money, you know, it's a little bit different. So what would you say um, is a good number for people to, to start out with or what I guess is is an amount? Right. And again, this is just generally speaking. Obviously, you understand that everyone is in different mm -hmm. financial situations, but just from people that may be listening from a, a, a stage one level. What, what's okay. a number that you feel like, okay, people can I'll be, with this amount? I'll be honest with you, totally 1,000% honest, and then I'll answer your question. Totally 1,000% honest. Here we go. 
if you have no trading skill, I can give you a million dollars, you'll end up with zero. If you have trading skill, I can start you out with seemingly nothing and you can grow it to a million dollars. Okay. I started about 80 days ago. I put $3,000 in an account. I grew it to $50,000. I traded maybe three to four times a week. Right. And when I traded, I traded maybe an hour and a half to two hours a day. It wasn't a long time. I've had students start with as much as $25,000. And I've had students start with as little as $800. Okay. The $800 student was a single mom. She started with $800. The last I checked on her was about three weeks after she started trading live and she went from 800 bucks to five grand. The guy who started with $25,000, he traded with some of his friends. So he had friends that were a little more affluent. Yeah. Three or four of them all gave him a little money and he started a $25,000 account. Now, I've answered your question. The question is, you know what I'm saying? Like how much to start with? I always like to respond though. Don't think about how much money you need to start. Think about how much time you can set aside to devote to education. So when people say, how much can I start with? I say, look, it's all good, bro. You know, if you don't have any skill, you're going to lose all the money. And if you have skill, it don't matter what you start with because you're going to be able to grow the money. So the question is not how much money I should start with, but the question is how much time can I devote every day to this new skill? For me and what I've seen in my class out of my students, because I survey them, I ask them questions, they fill out the little survey monkey surveys and tell me what's going on, right? What I'm seeing is students with no knowledge, like if they haven't, they don't know anything about the market. Within 21 days, they, they know what's going on. Like this is the student who purchases the program and does what's on the inside. Within 21 days, if they spend about an hour to an hour and a half a day, they know what's going on. Between day 45 and day 60, they're taking their first profitable independent trade where they didn't need me to tell them what to do. They didn't need anybody else. Like they knew, oh, I should buy right now or I should sell right now. They knew it independently and then the trade was profitable. So. If you have about an hour, an hour and a half a day, you know what I'm saying? Basically in 60 days, it is, it's cracking, you know, 1000%. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much money you have to start. As long as you know what you're supposed to be doing, it doesn't matter how much money you start with. You can, you can grow the money. And if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, I don't care how much money you start with. You're going to lose it all. Yeah. And you bring up a good point too, right? Like education at times is more valuable than money at times. Yes. Uh, you know, just the idea of learning something, you know, the, the ups and the downs, the good and the bad, um, you know, that, that mm -hmm. plays you know, a huge part because mm -hmm. as quickly as you make it, you can also lose it. Right? Yes, you can. Um, yes, you can. And I, and, I, and I think, you know, to your point, the idea of knowing that, right, and, and understanding that um, is, uh, is also uh, very, very important. But right. we're, because um, obviously with, with, with new traders in, in any market, specifically futures in this um, conversation, where is it that people... Um, like, how did, how did you learn about this? Like, where is it that people could either really get uh, resources or information to really um, educate um, on something like this? Because, again, as I'm sure you know, this is one of the things that um, isn't necessarily taught in the school system. Right? They don't make it readily available. No, sir. Theus, they don't. Man, I'm going to be honest. The stuff that gets you to the bag, they don't really make that re re uh, readily available. You know what they're very good at? They're very good at conditioning you to respond to bells. Mm -hmm. They're very good at conditioning you to respond to approval. <laughs> They're very good at you making you feel like you have to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's what education is doing. Um, where you have to go, everybody, if you're listening to this, you're in the right place. Because somebody like Theus is showing you, like, I love the whole podcast culture that's happening right now the videos the audio because all it is is alternative universities alternative education you know what i'm saying so hey everybody go to the podcast learn about it hey come to my site follow me on social learn about it because it's not going to be it's not going to be on your news at 11 it's not going to be at your news at 7 bloomberg's not going to teach you about it uh yahoo finance is not going to teach you about it this is one of those things where you gotta you know find a teacher and get to it 
Uh, you can get to it by yourself, but I don't want you to waste three years the way I wasted three years becoming successful and consistent. You know, um, what I'm finding is that if you if you have a mentor in life, you know, you kind of skirt past some of the potholes and things that will hold you back. So I would definitely say get a mentor and get to it. Don't waste time. Like, don't waste time. I know I know vending machines are cool and real estate is dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even going to lie. Some of these other businesses out there, they're very cool. There is nothing quite like trading. There's nothing. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't drive for dollars and close on a half a million dollars every day. Trading is that kind of game. You know, the friends that I have, like me, where I am right now, I'm consistently, you know, I'm in a good spot. You know, I'm not hurting for no meals, thank God. You know, and I'm Got doing it. Right, 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 right. But it's some people out here that are quite literally smacking it out of the city every time. Like every day they're waking up and they're six figuring it every day. Mm -hmm. These are some of my students. Like I have students because of the financial the position that they're in or because of the money that they had to begin with or whatever. Bro, I mean, these people out here, they a six figure a day. It's not even a joke. So I've never quite seen any business that does that. I've never quite seen a business that is commiserate to pay. I've never seen that sort of thing. Like, you know, and if I can just be honest, I don't even think dope game is that cold, but like, I don't think the dope game is doing six figures a day. And even if it, even if it is like, let's just say you like Pablo Escobar, like you totally got to hide out from the law. Like you can't even take your kids to the theme park. Yeah. So like, come on, bro. <laughs> you know, like there is nothing like trading. Yeah. And you know, you, you bring up again, another excellent point. A part of the reason why I started defining legacy is because I want to show people that look like us that you can make a lot of money the legal way. You know, yeah. when, when you're able to make money and not have to hide, <laughs> Right. When you're able to do certain things and still, you know, be on social media and stuff like that, like legally, 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 yes. and, you know, and yes. us as, you know, you know, African-Americans has just never been a time where um, I think people are able to like really do this and step out, you know, their comfort zone and really do this stuff without having to worry. Oh, you know, I'm going to get arrested. Like, nope, you can make this money legally. You know, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think exposure, you know, is a huge point yes. a part of this so that's another question I have for you too is like where was there ever a moment for you that made you realize like oh yeah this is this is real right yeah. so yeah my proficiency is in music is like I know how to play and sing uh, uh, you know church and sacred and secular MTV BET in the country out of the country you know knees under keys play like I know how to do that and uh you know, in order to make a good living as a musician, let me just break it down for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a 40 hour work week in corporate America, which is cool, very, very cool. Um, let's say you wanted to make like $50,000 a year and you want to be a musician, roughly that would be somewhere along the lines of four to five grand a month. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come in somewhere around low fours, high fives. So that's a thousand bucks a week. As a musician, the going rate, like, you might sit around and play for, two hours in my city, in Miami, like say you find a piano bar, you're going to sit down, you're going to play for two hours. You're going to make about 125, 150 bucks. So that means, you know, you're going to have to work a lot. Like you have to work maybe two, three gigs a day for the weekend. So you're going to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe you can make, you know, and thank God, you know, like I'm grateful I was able to do that. Like, you know, I had residencies on South Beach. I had stuff going on like Coral Gables and um, uh, the Breakers and uh, South Beach and Wynwood. Like I had places where I would go and play. So I was on a vacation. I was in Atlanta and uh, I was going to play golf with a buddy of mine. And so I went to his apartment and he had on this headset and I was like, What's going on? He was in front of a computer. Uh, he was he had the headset on. And when I came in, he was like, oh, give me one second. Give me one second. You know, like the be quiet. Go on one second. So I'm like, what's going on with this guy? So um, he basically stands up from the computer, brushes his teeth. He throws on a shirt, throws on some pants. We uh, go to the car. 
I was like, you know, what's those squiggly lines on your computer? That's what I called it. It was a candlestick chart. I say, what's those squiggly lines? He said, oh, I'm just trading. I say, well, you left the computer on, dog. Like, you don't want to turn it off or nothing like that? He's like, no, nah, either today I'm going to make uh, $2,000 or $5,000 or something like that. It was like $1,600 or $5,000 or something. And I'm thinking... Okay, so today he's going to make either $1,600 or $5,000. And he's cool. We've left his apartment on our way to go play around and call. And at this point right now, I don't, you know how long I have to sing <laughs> to make $1,600? I'm talking about I have to be right there. Here I am, baby. Sign, seal, deliver. I'm talking about I got to be home. You know, I have to sing them all, brother. I, do you remember the time? I mean, I have to sing every record perfect to an audience that's ready to pay me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my goodness. So that was such an eye-opening situation. I realized I was hustling the wrong way. Uh, what came to my brain was this idea, and I'll share it with you if you got 30 seconds. It's a money faucet. So everybody imagine a faucet that you can see and you can see under it. Imagine when you turn it on, no money comes out, not water, not Kool-Aid or juice either. And I really think somebody need to make a juice faucet for them all or whatever. <laughs> but, but imagine when you turn it on, money comes out. Okay, now dig. If you don't have your hand on your own money faucet, you're, you're, that's not good. That's just not good. Like, and when I say that, I mean it this way. If you have to impress someone or someone has to give you permission or ability or a way to make the money that's coming out of your money faucet, then it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. Um, Beyonce. Someone, she's, she doesn't have a hand on her money faucet. Somebody has to book her for the show. Then she needs to get all of the musicians, dancers, lights, choreography, uh, costume designers. It's a lot of people around whether or not Beyonce will have a successful performance. She's not directly in control of that. If you notice what happened with Rihanna though, Rihanna was performing all the time. In fact, she was one of the highest paid performers. She drops Fenty. Ain't been a whole lot of Rihanna performances lately. <laughs> Ain't been a whole lot of, you know why? Because she's finally got her hand on the money she can control. Oftentimes, you'll see our entertainers, you'll see our athletes and otherwise our well-to-do professionals in our culture. Once they achieve a certain level of success, they might even move away from the prominence that got them there in order to work a little closer to the money faucet. If LeBron James doesn't get hired by a team or if there's no one to watch, he might be the greatest basketball player, but he has nowhere to exercise that skill. You might have a job. You might have, um, maybe you're part of the gig economy. Someone has to hire you, say you're okay. Maybe you're a musician like me. When I realized that even if I was working with the biggest artist, I had to still get that song accepted by them, written on, sung on, I still it needed to make the album's final cut. I still needed to have a performing rights organization to collect the money for me. I still needed to make sure. And there were so many people in the way of me getting to the money. And I just didn't want that anymore. Trading was the only thing that I found that was not customer dependent. It was not inventory dependent. In fact, trading is the only business you can run where you don't need customers and you don't need inventory. Even Walmart, with all those customers, if there was nothing inside to buy, no one would buy anything. Hey, and if you're still Walmart and your store is stocked full of everything, if nobody comes in the door, you still have no sale because inventory and customers are so important in business, but not in the market. <laughs> I can wake up every day. I don't need anybody's approval. I don't need anybody's permission. And guess what? As good as I am is as good as I'm going to get paid. Mm, mm. Some of us, we're so good at our jobs. We've been on our jobs for seven years, haven't had a raise. You so good at your job, you can be on Instagram while doing your job and talking to a friend and still do your job the best in the office. 
You've gotten way more skilled at the at the at the job. You you definitely have more skill, but your skill and your pay are not commiserate. You still getting paid the same as though you just showed up for the job. Not in trading. So that's why I loved it. When I saw what what I needed to see, I realized how far I was from my money faucet, bro. I was like, mm -mm, let me into that. I know real estate. Real estate is great, but I still need to talk to a seller. I need to convince them of a price. I need to get all the contracts signed. We have a title company in the way. We have all these other things in the way. Hey, I love the vending machine business, but I still need to get a contract with whoever owned the spot. I still need to go and negotiate with them about what our split is going to be. Man, oh, man, I love online, you know, FBA, having a Shopify store. I love that, but I still got to stock these products. And even if I don't have to stock them, I have to make sure my droppers drop shipping we're still carrying them i have the only reason i know about all this stuff is because i tried it <laughs> the only that's the only reason y'all man trading i wake up i open my computer i see what i need to see i click a button i make money i close my computer i've never seen anything like it before and i ain't seen nothing like it since that, that's even better than the dope game. Because even if you got dope, somebody got to come buy it. Mm -hmm. This is co it's so crazy. It's the cold, it's the cold blood of this thing I think I ever saw, other than other than salvation. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. So an interesting point too you made is like trading is something that doesn't require customers, right? Like you can yeah. kind of be a loner and trade stocks, right? Um <laughs> You know, like the good thing about investing in the stock market or any market really is that you don't need to have like a team. Really, Like you really could be just you. You can actually be a loner um, and still invest. So why, why did that really pique your interest though? Right. Like, I mean, I might, I might've just said it, but. <laughs> why, why, why? Right. Because as a part of the gig economy, <laughs> as a part of the gig economy, that's what it was, man. Like I had to, like people had to say, oh, I'm having a party or I'm having an event. And then they had to say, DJ or live music, then they have to pick live music. Then they would have to say, okay, which of these companies for booking live music will I go to? So then they would have to hopefully pick one that represents me. Then they would have to say, which of these acts that I'm looking for best works with my event? Then hopefully they would select to select me finally. Then I would have to go take whatever time away from my family, whatever time away from whatever else it was I was trying to do with my life. I would have to go to this event. I would have to not only do well, but I would have to do amazingly well. I would have to over deliver. Mm -hmm. And then they wouldn't pay me. They would pay the agency. And then the agency would turn around and pay me. Mm -hmm. I am so far away from the money and the decision making and that equation, bro. Like, and if you're part of the gig economy, you know you are too. It's just too many factors. Too many things have to go right. I'm surprised I was able to eke out a living. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, honestly, I'm surprised I was like, I thank God for his goodness because, you know, that's eight or nine decisions somebody's got to make in my favor for me to even get a gig, an opportunity to put on clothes, to go somewhere, to set up my keyboard and my amp and play and sing. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of stuff that has to go right for me. I thank God that I was able to kind of grow my stature as a musician to get to a place where, you know, I could. I could afford to live in that gig economy, support a family in that gig economy. But when you want to go to the next level, you know, that's what's tough. If I'm playing a gig with a guy and he's only been playing drums for two years, then I know something's going on. Like, why is that guy even with me? You know what I'm saying? He doesn't belong with me. We shouldn't even be in the same place. Yeah. Um, but, you know, though, so I feel like it's one thing to, like, realize that. Right. It's, it's one thing to realize the situation that you're in, in terms yeah. of you may have to, you know, wait to get paid or, you know, you realize you in order to get money, you have to exert so much of your time. It's one thing to realize that and to say that. But it, you took the initiative to actually do something about it. Right. Yes. So yes. what's required in order for that to happen. Right. Because um, identifying is one thing, um, mm -hmm. but responding is another. So what's actually do you feel now that, you know, everything that you know, what's been required? in order for you to take that next step? Faith, hard work, overcoming fear. 
the you know the success that you want is on the other side of your apprehension on the other side of your fear on the other side of your doubt on the other side of your shame on the other side of your guilt on the other side of your failure like quite literally it doesn't matter how old you are how young you are you're living with some amount of um obstacles some amount of burdens you know what i'm saying i don't know what life has dealt you i don't know if life has dealt you uh, a hurt childhood. I don't know if life has dealt you emotional distress, anxiety. I don't know if you have disorders, eating disorders, uh, mental disorder. Like, I don't know. Uh, what I will say is this, though. Like, you are valuable and you're worth fighting for. Um, your, your tomorrow is worth you putting forth a good amount of effort today for. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if there's anything that you get from this podcast or from a trader from Miami, Florida, is that I don't care what they call you. I don't even care what you call yourself. What I want you to know is that you have better angels that you can employ. You have a greater work ethic. You have a bright future. You have hope. You are not without hope. You are not without skill or ability. You can do this. I know I'm kind of giving you the whole motivation vibe, but like, that's the first thing that you need. Like, bro, like sleeping in your car with roaches on you, how I did, don't, don't even let it get to there before you know you got to make a change or else. Hey, almost losing your wife and your kids like I did, don't do that. <laughs> don't lose your spouse or your children. Like, don't let it get dire. Just realize, oh, I'm in a situation where people are kind of in control. And I don't want people to be in control of that. I don't want anybody in control of what I eat. I don't want anybody in control of what it is I wear. If I go out, I don't want anybody in control of that. I don't want anybody in control of how much time I can spend with my spouse or my children. You know, if those are things that, that you know, that, I don't want anybody calling me because I owe them money. Like, I don't want that. And I don't want it for my life. I definitely don't want it for your life as well. So, like, don't get to where I let it get to. Like, I lost my apartment, had to move my family back in with my in-laws, and I slept in my car, put 100,000 miles on it in one year just so that I could realize what was happening. Like, don't be pig-headed. Don't be bullheaded. Don't be ridiculous. Don't do what I did. Don't be don't be foolish. Don't don't do that. <laughs> Man, it's way better ways to spend your time and spend your life. This is what you do. Get to work. Get a new skill that'll put you just a little closer to your money faucet. That'll get just a few more people out of the way. Now, there will always be someone that we have to serve, someone that we have to look after. But I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be anybody between you and your money you can get right to it. And uh, I would just say a little hard work, a little effort, a little belief, and you'll be okay. Let me tell you, 10 years is a, is a blink of an eye. So if it take you six months to get to a new skill, bro, it was just a, I mean, that was a piece of a blink of an eye. You know what I'm saying? Like six months. Hey, it might take you a year, but guess what? It's, I mean, one year, that's one quarter of a college education. They making them people stay in school for four years and pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. Ain't no jobs waiting on when they get out. So imagine you just, you know, take six months a year to, to sharpen up a skill. You're going to be better off for it, I believe. No, I agree. I agree. And you mentioned, you know, something that I took note of is like you thought like you had like pressure or pain points, right? Like things yeah. that you had to go through that forced you to be better. Yes. Like literally, even if you didn't want to, but that forced you. And I, and I think if you don't mind me saying, I think that may have either made you a stronger person, but may also make other people stronger individuals because on the flip side i think there's a lot of people right now that are so comfortable right there's a lot of people right now who don't have anything wrong right they're not rich but they're also not poor but because mm -hmm. they're so comfortable they're not mm -hmm. ever going to tap into the greatness that they really have right yes. so that's why i always tell people like sometimes when you're struggling that actually might be a good thing you might yes. not see it now right you might not yes. see it in the short term but the things that you're going through it's the reason why you're going through the, through the storm so that one day you can always kind of carry that with you. Of yes. like, you know what? I got to get more. 
I got, I, I've been through too much to, yes. to slow down, even though you probably could, right? Whether, you know, it's because you know, all right, you made a good amount of money now or you're better off in your career, whatever, you still keep that with you. But I just think there's just so many people that are so, so, so comfortable. And that's not a bad thing, right? Like at the end of the day, if you have your peace of mind, hey, live your life. But at the same time, just know that like, you know, sometimes struggle can be a good thing. You know, sometimes exactly. failure can be a good thing. Sometimes having your back against the wall can be a good thing. Uh, but it sounds like, you know, again, future has kind of helped you and change your life. But do you feel yeah, like it really do, did. do you feel like futures can save someone's life? Yeah, without a doubt. Mm. I guess hyperbolic, like, you know, that's a very uh mag, like that's a huge statement to change someone's life. Okay. So kind of let's put this in context. If 75% of marriages end because of financial trouble, if uh students can get into universities but not attend them because they can't afford them if in life if you just want to hit a light switch you got to pay somebody so that the lights will be on at your house you know i won't say money changes someone i won't say futures can change your life but what i will say this it would make a great difference in how you experience the life that you have. Um, what would we pray? Like, I often think about this. What would, we, what would we pray about if money wasn't in a part of our prayer life? Mm. What, would we, what would we argue about if finances could never be the root of an, yeah, of an issue? So let me ask you something, right? Where exactly can people um, start trading the futures market, right? Like, so obviously there's places to buy little, you know, real estate and rental properties. There's places to, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. start, you know, investing in stocks and stuff like that. But where, uh, like, what are some platforms, I guess, for people to really get started? Um, the platform that I use to trade the futures, and there are a lot of these, uh, it's, it's called Ninja Trader. In fact, I'm a ninja trader educator, a member of their like uh, ecosystem of educators. I think uh, so far, I think I'm the only one that looks like me uh, in that system. And uh, they go there, you can download, if you go to ninjatrader.com, you can download the platform onto your PC and you can also um, like download free data you know what I'm saying? So you can practice and get into the sim like we we're talking about. Um, if you don't have a PC and you're a Mac person, there's platforms like TradingView, Motive Wave. Uh, there are a few others that you can trade the futures with. And these are, and the ones you just mentioned are all uh, on your phone, the, the, the latter? Um, actually, Ninja Trader, I would prefer laptop or desktop, even though they do have them, even though they have a mobile version. Yeah. You know? Uh, so yeah, that that's cool. Uh, Trading View, I believe, has a full mobile version, and so does Motive Wave as well. So they'll work on your phone too. Got you. So if you could give uh, three pieces of advice to new traders when it comes to futures. One, give yourself grace to grow. Give yourself grace to grow. You're not going to be amazing your first time doing anything. Just think about a baby walking. They walk like Frankenstein. The, the ballerina, like the prima ballerina for New York City ballet right now used to fall just trying to put one foot in front of the other. So give movement time like she did. Give your trading time. Like I'm telling you, give yourself the grace you grow. Second thing is your wildest dreams aren't wild enough. Like what I'll say is if you say, man, if I could only make $40,000 a year, like I want you to just put another zero behind that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just throw that behind. Oh, man, if I can only make $500 a day, I want you to throw another zero behind that. You know what I'm saying? Because I want you to think bigger. Think bigger. The last thing I'll say is this. Trading and the market in general has nothing to do with itself. At least successfully doing so has nothing to do with finding the right market. 
Um, what it has to do is being the right participant, being in the right frame of mind. Imagine going to a car lot and having to buy whatever they offer you. No one does that. If the car, even if it's the right car and it's the wrong price, we're all willing to walk out of the car lot. And it's just like that in trading. If they won't give you what you're looking for at the price you're looking for, don't feel as though you're pressured to participate. You have to have an interior awareness. You know what I'm saying? When it comes down to this. So that's the three things I would say, definitely. What's, uh, what would you say has been your best and worst trade? And you don't have to say, like, obviously, the, the, the number amount, but just the, the, uh, the, the mindset behind um, the one that's like, yeah, this was this probably my greatest one ever. And the one where it's like, you know, I, I don't know what the hell I was doing with this trade. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like, oh, hey, you, I like that. I like that. Years, I, I know like you want to be quite asked me that way. Um, in life, always use hope, and the market never use hope. I think uh, on my worst days are days that I trade with a little hope, and I we should never hope in the market. You know what I'm saying? Like, you should know or not know, but you shouldn't hope it goes up or hope it goes down. Never. Yeah. Uh, so that's bad. Uh, whenever I've done that, those days have not turned out well. So using hope, whatever day. Um, there have been days where I've made less money, but I felt like everything was clicking. There was one day this year, I want to say it was the open house in April. Um, it's on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel, but there was an open house. Like every month I do like an open trade room where everybody doesn't matter who you are, come and watch what we do every day. And this particular month I called out, like if you had one contract to trade, one contract, which means your account was as small as $500. I called out $6,000 worth of trades in one day with one contract. Like, to me, there, there are days, like, that's not my biggest day by far, but there are days when it's just clicking. Like, you can feel it. Like, whew, I'm just on, and it's nothing that can stop me. I, don't, I know everything they're going to do. Just give me the money now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can feel those days, man. It's, that was one of the days. Like, I, it's very memorable in my career because at this point in my career, it's not about if I can be profitable. That's a foregone conclusion. What it's about at this point in my career is how many people I can turn into ATMs. That's one. And the second, how skillfully can I take people into and out of the market safely? Like I'm inspired by somebody like, you know, Miss Tubman, you know what I'm saying? She kept like, once she experienced the freedom, she kept coming back and getting people to what she had already experienced. She did that. She was their safety, their guide, their everything. And, you know, every day the market is here to take your money. That's what it's here for. You know, like, don't get it confused. They're trying to get your bread. They're trying to separate you from your money. You know what I'm saying? So every day I lead a trading room and all of my students in the trade room, at this time, we might have maybe 105, 89, 112. If there's an open trade room, it might be like 350. But I lead these people into the market and out of it every day. And I just remember being like, yo, $6,000 worth of calls in one day? Like, bro, I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe they might have to get my head measured for like a, uh, <laughs> a, like a bust at the Hall of Fame of this joint. Like, I felt very, like, it felt good. That was the best feeling trading day I've had in a long time. But you know what, though, and, you know, you've obviously been through a lot and overcame a lot. And it's, and it's great to hear the joy that you have when having great days like that. Um, and I say that because considering everything that we talked about, not even just from a future standpoint, right, but from a financial literacy and investing and mindset overall, um, yeah. all that leads me to my final question. It's a, it's a question that I have that I ask everyone that's ever been on the show to find your legacy. Um, and that question that I have for you is, how do you want to be remembered? Mm. No time soon. I guess that'll be first. I don't want to have to be remembered no time soon. Uh, but when it does arrive, the appointment that we all must, uh, must be at and never be late to, uh, I like to be remembered as someone who 
tried, someone who was unselfish, someone who gave, someone who thought it was okay to give, you know? I, I like that. I like the idea of thinking that, I guess, this is a weird question. You, you don't know this about me, but my mother passed in uh, 2008. And my mom, she worked for 411. She had a very meager little job. And she was just a little lady that went to a little church and she was from 30 minutes away. And, you know, nothing grandiose per se about her life. At her funeral though, it was at a church uh, that held 2,500 people if it was fully uh, full of capacity in its seating and maybe another 600 or so people in the overflow. That place was packed that day. Like my little old mom who had a little old life packed out a church on a Saturday. I mean, you're talking about 3,000 people putting on clothes and saying that they're going to pay their respect. Now, me and my profession, I have never seen this before unless the person was like a politician. Like if I played a funeral, it was like a politician or like somebody who was super rich or something like that. That's that's the only way you get a church to fill out for a funeral, because, you know, what most people do, either I'm going to the wake or I'm going to the funeral or or they won't go to the funeral, but they'll stop by the house. You know how we do. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah. know, but here it was this little lady, uh, my mother. And the church was packed. And I realized that in her life, what she did was in little ways, just gave to people. She just gave, you know, she was a giver uh, financially, good advice. Um, I was standing around, you know, like it's the, it's the family's responsibility to stand by the casket during the wake and kind of shake hands and stuff. People would come by and say, hey, I don't know if you knew this, but your mother bought uh, me and my wife wedding rings for us. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, your mom kept our kids when we were having fin um, marital trouble and we needed help. Um, your mom paid my tuition one year. I didn't know. These are things I didn't know about my mama that they telling me about my mama when I'm trying to grieve over my mama, but I'm feeling proud that she my mom. You know what I'm saying? I, when I'm, I guess when I'm given that question, I, I always think of that, like, what'll pack out a church? What, what sort of life do you have to lead in order for people to take their day off and offer it to you as a form of respect? That's huge. That's huge. And I guess I, I, I just want to be known as somebody who gave, bro. Yeah. That's you know, how to do it. You know, and I leave, uh, I leave this part of the show very open-ended. You know, like, obviously, you know, during the, the meat or the entree, if you will, of the show is, specific to you know just whatever it is that you may be great at or able to help people but you know this part is more so for you just to be able to reflect you know on just like life as a whole so I definitely appreciate um you know you sharing that story and I'm sure you know someone else may be going through that or having gone through that whatever case may be but that's your real you know life is life is life you know and to your point too about the whole um when you have an appointment that's not an appointment you you're gonna uh, be late to you know, and it's not right. an appointment that you're going to request to make, uh, <laughs> but it's going to happen. Um, yes, it but will. If you could, man. Well, first thing first, again, thank you, you know, for being on the show. I, I think I can thank speak you. on behalf of a lot of people that are going to listen that this was definitely a dope episode. Um, it was a powerful one. I'm sure people will have learned a lot. Uh, but if you could, man, just drop all uh, your social media, right, where people before, can find before, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, before they, if possible, can I give a gift to your listeners? Uh, just because I'm on the Defiant Legacy podcast and man, I'm hanging out with this. I want to give uh, a free course away. So if you follow the link right here, it'll be like uh, trade like the trader dot com slash Theus. And it should be somewhere like on the screen or in the show notes or something like that. Click there. You let me know where to send the course access. I'll send the course access to you. And that's because uh, that's for theaters, man. I really appreciate everybody listening. Uh, if you want to get connected with me, it's simple, man. Uh, you just hit me up on the gram or on Facebook or uh, hit me up on the phone number. Or, you know, just call me. Anything is everything's cool. Uh, my Instagram is at J underscore the underscore trader. 
Uh, don't be confused by a fake system. A lot of people fake it like they're me these days. I never ask for payments over Bitcoin or anything like that. So don't go for the craziness. <laughs> um, so it's J underscore the underscore trader. Um, and it's just the letter J. You can also visit www.trade like the letter J. So trade like J dot com to get more information. And that's about it. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. And uh, that's how you know you're really making it, man. Once uh, you know, once you start getting fake accounts. Oh man, that's a sign of success. Oh, <laughs> well, what, what would you say? Uh, it's done. Uh, what, what would you say uh, the website is with the with the backslash D? What's the beginning part again for people to? Uh, it would be trade like J the trader. So trade like T R A D E like L I K E J the letter J the trader T H E. T R A D E R. Did I get that right? Yep, yep, trade yep. like trade the trader.com slash theus. Got you. And it'll be That'll a be free, free, free investment course for people, right? For sure. Got you. Got you. For got sure. you. Um, so, yeah, you know, on, on my end, y'all, of course, uh, make sure you go follow uh, Define Your Legacy on Instagram as well as Facebook. Subscribe to Theus Elijah on YouTube. Um, Define Your Legacy on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. Theus Elijah on TikTok. And DYO podcast on Twitter. All right, you have uh, any any final words for us, man? And it could be you know related to to futures or just anything in life in general. Hey, come real close. I got a secret for you. What's up? I love you, and there's <laughs> nothing you could do about it. You know, it's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You know, you can beat me up, but I'm just gonna love you after that. Uh, you can push me away, but I just love you from over here. Uh, you can bring me close. I love you close, man. It's just, I love you. And I want you to have a fantastic day. That's all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Positive vibes all around. Jay, the trader, appreciate you for being on the show. And love. just like that, y'all, we gone. Peace. Stay blessed. <laughs> Much love.